Good morning, everybody. Woo! All right. Welcome to our Sunday school. I am pumped that you are here today. We have a lot of neat stuff going on today, and a lot of new folks in class today. So, welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, we read a lot of Bible, and we look at a lot of Bible, so if you like to read and look at the Bible, you will like this place. And if you do not, then you will get to read and look at the Bible for the next 38 minutes. So, there's that. so if you have a Bible, open up to Mark chapter 1. Uh, we will likely not finish Mark chapter 1 today, but we will finish it next week. You're like, yeah, right, whatever. Sure, maybe. maybe. Uh, and before we kind of get into that, a big thank you to Thesa uh, for the really fun game night on Friday night. Yeah. Uh, it was a blast, and uh, I will never think about spatulas the same way again. <laughs> and if you want to know what I'm talking about, I'll tell you at our next game night. <laughs> so there's that. All right, so. Uh, what we start with, uh, what we've been starting with each week for the last few weeks is a very simple question. Uh, if you've got a handout or you're near a handout, I ask you to bring yours back from last week so we didn't print as many this week. Um, if you're a member of our class, hand your handout to somebody who's not so that they can follow along. Uh, but the question that we started out with uh, the last few weeks is what is God doing in you? And, and I want to make sure that I'm, that I'm asking the question that I want to ask and I want to make sure that you're understanding the question that I'm asking. This is not, what have you noticed that's neat that you never saw in Mark before? That's, that's a different question. Okay? And that's a, that's a good question, but that's not this question. This is, what is God doing in you through his word from the portion of Mark we've studied so far? So that's the question I want you to keep in your mind as I read all of Mark chapter 1, and then we'll come back and we'll answer and talk about this question for a second. So if you got your Bible... Mark chapter 1. If you don't have a Bible, feel free to just listen, because listening to the Bible being read is actually commanded more in the Bible than reading the Bible. So there's that. So Mark chapter 1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat, mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice came out of him. 
And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. And immediately he left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and he took her by the hand, and he lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. And that evening at sundown they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him. And they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. And a leper came to him, imploring him, and kneeling, said to him, If you will, you can make me clean. And moved with pity, he stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. And Jesus sternly charged him and sent him away at once and said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone. But go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded, for a proof to them. But he went out and began to talk freely about it, and to spread the news, so that Jesus could no longer openly enter a town, but was out in desolate places, and people were coming to him from every quarter. I say it almost every week, I hope you love the Bible. It is the most unique book in the entire universe. There will never be another one written. And we have exactly what we are supposed to have. So the question is, what is God doing in you through his word from the portion of Mark we have studied so far? So what is God doing in you? Yes, ma'am? So... Um at work, I'm the uh, executive director. I'm oversee multiple teams, a lot of different teams. And um, I, I love Jesus as a leadership model, the example that he set. So it really struck me last week when you were talking about how his followers should have been following him. And the moment they lost him, like that, he, he could have really chastised them. Right. He really could have, you know, condemned them. Yes. <laughs> um, and to me, it, you know, I've been listening for what are those leadership model things that I should be picking up? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It starts out by him going out into a wilderness, and before he did anything, before he called any followers, he prepared himself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then when he had followers, he um, he led by example, right? And then he didn't. He didn't. He did at times hold them accountable, and yes. he did at times <laughs> call them out. I was gonna say he will get he to will. that later on in life. But so far, right? yes. early on in that leadership, right. when that's right. That's right. This is about timing, yeah, right? Yes. This is about timing. And yes. The, the trust and the, yes. uh, and so it's really, really fundamental to build that before <coughs> they start like laying the whip down, right? Yep. Um, and then even in the midst of it, he went away again. So he continues right. to work himself yes. for the things that they so, need to do. So what kind of a model is that for us then, if the only perfect human being that ever lived invested time alone to grow in his relationship, because Luke 252 tells us that he did this, with the Father. Whew. There's a there's a lot going on there. Yes, very good. Excellent. Somebody else? I thought I saw another hand over here. I'm not I promise I'm not trying to be like a Baptist preacher during an invitation. I see that hand. But <laughs> you, know, you, talks, you talks grew up in church, this, you got that. <laughs> it talks about this leper and the leper uh, sent away and said, hey, you know, be obedient to the law. And I've spent a lot of time in Leviticus lately, which is, you know, yep. waving this and slaughtering that. And anyway. We're going to spend some time in Leviticus this morning, actually. Woohoo! Um, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty rough unless, you, uh, unless you're a butcher. Uh, I mean, the trait of a butcher. Yep. Uh, so, you know, you, you look at this and you come across it and you say, okay, this is what this leper is supposed to do. 
So I was thinking about that obedience. We go back to Matthew, and Matthew gives the story of the leper, but then really leaves all this last part about yes. him going, That's right. and running off, and telling everybody. This is, this is one of the very rare spots in Mark where we get, wait for it, more well, detail in Mark. <laughs> and Matthew, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so what it brought me to is kind of thinking about this obedience. And, and you know, we've, we've touched on this in class several times, but then it then kind of going into Colossians 3 really pushed um, Colossians 3 1 says therefore if you have been raised up with Christ which hopefully everybody in this room has um, keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God set your mind on the things above not on the things the earth for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God when Christ who is our life is revealed then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Amen. And, it, and, it, and then it goes on and talks about the things that we're supposed to cast off and remembering that. And that's the obedient side of it. And remember those things, the impurity, the immoral, passion, evil desires, greed, etc. So this challenge to, to obey. It, it, right? it, the, the, the mark was the catalyst to look through yeah. this more. So it's amazing how the Holy Spirit uses Scripture as a trampoline to jump to another part of Scripture, mm -hmm. to jump to another part of Scripture. It's just, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. All right, one more. Yes, Doug? Uh, many of you know I work down at the National Cemetery. Yes. So day in and day out. What do you do at the National Cemetery? You, what do you do at the National Cemetery? I'm a cemetery rep. I take the families to the shelters and can help them conduct services and so forth. So every single day at your job is somebody's worst day. Uh, exactly. Okay. Numerous times. Yep. Uh, so I hear. I, I, so far, I've heard over two thousand sermons. And it's like at the cemetery. At the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Wow. You've only been there a year. <laughs> two years. Yeah, two years. Yeah, two thousand sermons. Wow. So I hear this, and and the Lord really struck the leper. Uh, and I hear this day in and day out, and. And one day, just last week, I didn't know it was the pastor from the park. So I said, you know, I, I, after all this, you know, I said, it's a submission thing. It really keeps coming back. But this this particular instance where he says, if you could, he knew he could. Oh, yeah. His confidence. It's that submission to his authority. And it ties into what he said. Being obedient is submitting and it's like, are we really submitting? Great question. Do we submit to? So I'm internalizing this and saying, wow, okay, okay. <laughs> you sit there and you think, uh, I don't want to submit to that. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll be very honest with you. There's parts of the Bible I don't like. Exactly. And I'm probably going to get thrown out of the room for saying that, but there's parts of the Bible I don't like. Like, I just, I don't, like my flesh rages against these things. And the reality is, praise the Lord, we have the Holy Spirit who's doing this work and will not quit. And it is just beautiful. So, two things. One, thank you for being a light in what could be a very dark place. Uh, and two, thank you for letting the scriptures wash over and wash over and wash over and wash over. So, well, you hear the gospel thing. preached there, but you hear a lot of heresy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so all day, you know, I'm thinking about this all day long. <laughs> and it's like, wow, I'm going to All right. So let's jump into today's lesson. So last week we looked at verses 35, 36, 37, 38, and 39. So if you got a handout, we're about a third of the way down page 42 of the handout. And if you're uh, new to our class, we don't go fast. <laughs> Insert gentle laugh track here, right? Um, and I'm okay with that. So <clears throat> today's text is verses 40 through 45. And uh, what I want to leave us with today are two and maybe three <laughs> questions for us to think about between now and next Sunday morning where I want to have a pretty robust conversation about what the scripture says on some topics. So let's start with uh, verse 40 and see how far we get. So, and a leper. So let's stop there. 
Um, so I, I told you last week we were not going to show pictures of leprosy, right? So no PowerPoint pictures of leprosy today. This is good. Um, but we are going to see what the Bible says about leprosy. So let's go to uh, Leviticus. Thank you, Dan. Uh, chapter 13. Uh, and if you have an ESV, this is the, the translation that we're using. Uh, the footnote in uh, Mark 1, verse 40, about leper there, actually directs you over to Leviticus chapter 13. So what we find in Leviticus 13, uh, my translation of the scripture has a, a heading above Leviticus chapter 13, and it talks about, and it says the, the laws about leprosy. So uh, first I just want to make sure we understand where we are in history. So uh, we are at a place in history where you could not go, I, we use Publix for our pharmacy, where you could not go to Publix and get an antibiotic prescription if you came down with leprosy, and in a few weeks you'd be absolutely fine. Because if you went to your doctor today and your doctor looked at your skin or a spot on your body and said, oh, that's leprosy, your doctor would not panic. Your doctor would not do what, <laughs> what Leviticus chapter 13 told the priests to do. Because we have medicine that will take care of that today. Uh, and unfortunately, medicine, this medicine is not available in all parts of the world. And there are people in the world today who suffer horribly with this particular disease. So I, I want to go, don't want to go and look at all of it, just the first couple of verses, and we'll uh, flip back and look at a couple of things. In verse 13, so the, the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, uh, sorry, verse 1, uh, Leviticus 13, verse 1. The 13 is really big, so sometimes I say the verse when it's actually the chapter. So the, the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, when a person has on the skin of his body a swelling or an eruption of, or a spot, and it turns into a case of the leprous disease on the skin of his body. Then he shall be brought to Aaron the priest, or to one of his sons the priest, and the priest shall examine the diseased area on the skin of his body. So let's just pause for just a second. So this is a skin disease. There's something wrong with the skin. And if you think you might have it, where are you supposed to go? Is there any debate or discussion or ambiguity here? Like, if you think you're supposed to have, you think you have this, you go to the priest, right? Aren't you glad that you are not an Old Testament priest? <laughs> like, like, I don't know how you feel about animals, but there's a lot of killing of animals. Thank you. Like, you, you prep me just flawlessly here, right? It's just a, it's just a lot of bloodshed and waving and burning and uh, sprinkling and splashing. I mean, there's just a lot of this as you go through Leviticus. And then, just as an added miscellaneous duties as a sign, uh, you also get to look at bad spots on people's body, right? Uh, in verse three, and the priest shall examine the diseased area on the skin of his body. And if the hair in the diseased area has turned white and the disease appears to be deeper than the skin of his body, it is a case of leprous disease. So this is like giving you some detail as to, <laughs> Amy's about to throw up over here. So that, this is as far as we're gonna go into the different scenarios. We're now gonna skip to the end of Leviticus chapter 13. Um, look at verse 40. So, so leprosy causes the hair on, the, on that part of the body to fall out eventually. And this could, be, this could be a problem, Mike. So it could be a problem. So, you know, God gives us verse 40. If a man's hair falls out from his head, he is bald. Right, Mike? So he, he, is, he is clean. Right? And, and Gay, verse 41, if a man's hair falls out from his forehead, he has baldness of the forehead, and he is clean. So you, you guys are not unclean because you are, like, that, that is not what we're talking about. I just want to make sure. So, Luke, I just want to make sure there's no leprosy in here. So if you read Leviticus 13, don't freak out because there's people with lost some hair in different places, okay? That's not what this is talking about. But I want you to go back to verse 3 real quick because I stopped right before the sentence that I want to focus on in verse 3. The very last sentence in verse 3, when the priest has examined him, if he has, if he has this leprous disease, he shall pronounce him what? Unclean. Unclean. So if you have active leprosy, you are unclean. All right. So let's go back to Leviticus chapter 5. 
That, that's all leprosy. That's, we're, we, we're good, Amy? We're all right? Okay, good. That's better now. Okay. <coughs> Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1. If anyone sins in that he hears a public adjuration to testify, and though he is a witness, whether he is seen or come to know the matter, yet does not speak, he shall bear his iniquity. Or if anyone touches an unclean thing, whether a carcass of an unclean wild animal, or a carcass of unclean livestock, or a carcass of unclean swarming things, and it is hidden from him, and he has become unclean, and he realizes his guilt, or if he touches human uncleanness of whatever sort the uncleanness may be, with which one becomes unclean, and it is hidden from him, and he comes to know it and realizes his guilt, or if anyone utters with his lips a rash oath to do evil or to do good, any sort of rash oath that people swear, and it is hidden from him, when he comes to know it and he realizes his guilt in any of these, when he realizes his guilt in any of these and confesses the sin, the sin he has committed, he shall bring to the Lord as his compensation for the sin he has committed, a female from the flock, a lamb or a goat, for a sin offering. And the priest shall make atonement for him for his sin. So, if you have an active leper who has leprosy, that leper is? And what are you supposed to do with the leper? If you're the leper, who are you supposed to go to? The priest. Who can touch you if you're the leper? The priest. Ra'ah. Ra'ah is the Hebrew word for what the priest is supposed to do when the leper comes, and it is to look, to perceive, to inspect. Nowhere until the leper has been pronounced clean in Leviticus 14 is the priest to touch the leper. And then, then only with something that has been dipped in blood, and he puts, he touches it on, on his right earlobe and his right thumb and his right big toe. Don't ask me to explain that. <laughs> I literally have no, and I don't want to get into rabbit, rabbit trails on, like this. it's just, it's just odd. Um, but the, nobody gets to touch the leper. Or you're what? Okay, great, let's go back to Mark chapter one. Some of you right now are going, wait, what? I think I know where he's going. Yep. And we're gonna stew on that one for a week. Verse 40. And a leper, now, I, I want to make sure we don't misinterpret what the scripture says. You can be a leper with one spot on your skin. This man could have been a leper for the last three days. He could have been a leper for the last 30 years. The Bible doesn't tell us. So I don't want you to go into the text with a preconceived idea that this person is wrapped in cloths and has been, in this case, for 30 years. That is not what the Bible says. The Bible also does not tell us that he's only been a leper for three days. We don't know. But Mark is abundantly clear that he is a leper. So if we have a leper, Luke, the leper is what? Unclean. Unclean. You got it, buddy. This is like, yes. Uh, this is one of the reasons that we should not shy away from teaching uh, young people hard things. We send them to school for dozens of hours a week and have them learn subjects that are very difficult. And then we come to the scripture and we go, oh, that's really hard. Shame on us. Verse 40. And a leper came to him. Who's him? Jesus. Yes, came to him imploring. This is, this is calling and calling and asking and asking. And this is a present participle active. It means repeatedly over and over and over. This was not somebody who was quiet. This was loud. This was over and over and over. And kneeling. Again, another present participle active. He is, he is bowing down, kneeling repeatedly. He's calling out repeatedly. He is kneeling repeatedly. Now, if he has been a leper for a very long period of time, this would have been extremely painful. This would not have been comfortable in any way, shape, or form to do. This would have been very physically demanding to do. And he said, another present participle active, He's saying this over and over and over. He says to Jesus, if you will, you can make me clean. 
If you will, you can make me clean. If you will, you can make me clean. If you will, you can make me clean. If you will, you can make me clean. If you will, you can make me clean. Who is standing there with Jesus? Who? Some of his disciples. Some of his disciples. That's exactly right. Remember, they're they're with him. They're just with him all the time. Who's hearing this guy? Who's hearing this guy? Everybody around him, right? He's making a lot of ruckus. Picture for just a second. Somebody walks through those doors right now. And we can tell visibly that something is wrong. And this person starts to physically move in a way and repeat something over and over and over. Ava, everybody's going to notice. Right? Like everybody's going to notice. If you will, you can make me clean. Isn't that what uh, lepers were commanded to do when they came around as well, just to let everybody know? Uh, they were commanded, actually in Leviticus uh, 13, they were commanded to cover their upper lip, uh, which is to, to keep the infection from spreading. Uh, and the, the crazy thing is that, you know, you didn't know about germs in Leviticus, but Jesus is already, is already teaching us about how infectious things spread. Uh, to cover their upper lip and to repeat the words, what? Unclean. 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 Like, that was his mantra. His mantra was not, if you will, you can make me clean. So let me ask you a question. Is this leper following the law? No, he's not. What will Jesus do? Verse 41. It's some of the most beautiful verses, words in the whole scripture. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Moved with pity. Now, uh, Luke, I'm going to talk about girlfriends for just a second. Do you have a girlfriend? No. No, okay. <laughs> well, at some point you might. And at some point, the thought might cross your mind to tell her that you love her with all your heart. Right? <laughs> and right now, your mom is... Your mom is thrilled that, they, that that is your reaction, okay? Because that is going to bring with it all sorts of stuff that is just complicated. But if you and I were living 2,000 years ago, you would never think about telling a girl, I love you with all my cardia. No way. Would not be happening. What you would say is you would say, I love you with all my bowels. <laughs> No, because that's where we feel things. If you think about the last time you, you physically felt something, you don't physically think. If you, okay, if you physically feel something in your heart, go to the ER. Right? Like, that is bad. We feel things in our gut, right? You heard the phrase, that was a gut punch. It didn't mean somebody physically hit you. That means you felt it here. This is what, this is the word that is used. Uh, it looks like it's Italian, right? Splagatin is the man. Uh, it, it's, it's this move, it's this impactfulness here. And this is what we are seeing that happens to Jesus. He has a human physical response, and it is pity. So moved with pity, he stretched out his hand. And I looked at 27 different English translations and five different Greek manuscripts and every single one of them says the exact same thing. Touched it. There is no doubt, none whatsoever in the earliest middle or late manuscripts in any English translation what exactly Jesus did here. Jesus touched it. Now, did Jesus ever sin? Oh, you don't waffle on this. Did Jesus ever sin? No. Uh, there we go. Did Jesus fulfill the law? Yes. yes, absolutely he did. So here's my question number one for you. 
how is he not ceremonially unclean right here? He reached out his hand and touched him and said to him, now I don't know how long it had been since this guy had been touched, but I bet you a nickel he's going to remember the next words. Mm -hmm. I will. And the word here is to choose or to prefer. I am making a choice to do this so that there is no doubt whatsoever that this was not the guy bumped into Jesus and this was accident. No, 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 no. This is intentional. He makes a statement of intent. I determine. I choose. And then he says, be clean. This is an imperative. This is a command. To be clean. Go to Genesis 1. One of the most beautiful things about Genesis chapter 1 that I think we forget to teach people is the obvious. Verse 3. Genesis 1 verse 3. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. There was light. And we all go, well, well duh. God said it, and that means it's going to happen. Right. We're developing a pattern very early on of the power of our God to speak and to make things occur. And I love that Jesus, who was there in Genesis chapter 1, is here in Mark chapter 1, and he says, I will be clean." And it should not surprise us at all what happens in verse 42. Because we have, from our earliest exposure to the scripture, which for many of us was either a story about Jesus or Genesis chapter 1, the demonstration of the pattern of when God speaks, this thing will happen. We can take him at his word every single time, which is beautiful. It is the only way I can go to sleep at night. Otherwise, the... Like, is the universe going to fly apart while I'm asleep? Is God going to go back on his word and change his mind about our salvation? Like, it's, it's just, it's terrifying if we have a God who does not keep his word. In verse 42, in Mark chapter 1, and immediately. So in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, God said, let there be light, and there was light. How much time elapsed between the time he said, let there be light, and there was light? It happened. If Mark was writing Genesis 1, this was how Mark would say it. And God said, let there be light. And immediately, immediately there was light. Yes. Yes. And immediately the leprosy left him. And he was made clean. Now, you can go back and you can study all of Leviticus that you want. And the only thing that the priest ever got to do was to declare that something was clean or was not clean. The priest never, ever, ever got to make something clean. This is new. <laughs> this is beautiful. And, and when John the Baptist gets arrested later in Mark, and has a moment of doubt where he is questioning whether or not everything that he has preached and said about Jesus is really true. He sends his disciples back to ask Jesus. He says, are you really the Messiah? Because John knows what's about to happen. John knows he's about to die. He says, are you really the Messiah? Jesus tells John's disciples, you go tell John that the lame can walk and the lepers have been cleansed because only the Messiah can do that. Mm. This is Jesus declaring to this man, I am the Messiah. And if this guy knew his Old Testament, which I really think he didn't, right? <laughs> he would have picked up on the fact that Jesus is the Messiah right here from verse 42. 
and immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. And then Jesus does this really crazy thing. He sternly charged. If you have a different translation, your translation may say something like, and Jesus got really angry with him and, said, and told him this. And you're like, whoa, 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 what? He was like moved, and then he gets angry. Yep. He was sternly charged him and sent him away at once and said to him, see, that's an imperative, that's a command. Pay attention to this. Discern this clearly, that you say nothing to anyone. Now, If I tell you, Don, that I'm going to tell you something, and I want you to tell nobody what I tell you, is there any doubt who I want you to tell? If I say these words, I don't want you to tell anybody this. <laughs> you don't tell her, no. <laughs> nobody, right? This is super clear. Say nothing to anybody, but go and show yourself to the... What is Jesus pointing him back to? He's pointing him back to the Old Testament law. That's exactly right. Because the priest was the one who declared him unclean. Right? And when he sees this man again, and he sees that he's been made clean, what do you think the priest is going to do? The priest is going to turn to Leviticus 14 which was a very unused portion of Scripture. <laughs> because that tells the priest what to do when somebody shows back up and they've been made clean. And i got to kind of think that if, if the leper had gone to the priest, the priest would have been like, oh, we get to use that chapter now. <laughs> like, we, like, we don't use that, like that chapter. We... And do you think the priest might have asked him, Whoa, 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 how did this happen? Are you the same? You're the same. How did this? But alas, it's not what happened. And we'll talk about what happened next week. <laughs> this is a beautiful passage. Absolutely stunningly beautiful passage. Jesus, for just a second, pulls back the Clark Kent suit, and you see just a little bit of the S on the chest. <laughs> and we all go, wait, what? Yes. He is like no one else. And there are so many parallels to what is going on right here and what he has done for us. Because we, if you haven't figured this out, are the lepers. We are consumed and eaten with our sin. And we are completely unable to deal with our own issue. And we have to go to someone who can. And we have a Savior who did. And this is amazing. And I hope you get excited about this. And if you don't, then I'm going to be excited. And you can just watch me be excited. So <laughs> there's that. So hang on to your handout. We'll use it again next week. And we'll print some more because we ran out. That's awesome that we had to set up tables today. Fantastic. We do this each week. Did you guys know this? You're invited to come back and do this every single week. So we would love to have you every single week. Some of you are on the once a month plan. I would encourage you to be on like the more than once a month plan. My wife is going to frown at me for that later on. All right, so our homework, your homework at the bottom on the back side of the handout is to pray for help in understanding Mark. Hear Mark multiple times. Think about Mark often. Talk with someone about Mark. Share your insights about Mark and then invite a member and a non-member because there are more people that need to see this beautiful Jesus who is giving us a glimpse of who he actually is. Now, when you finish with your prayer time today at your tables, we need all of these tables to go to the gymnasium. And I don't think the chairs need to go, but I think that just the tables need to go. So we'll just take the tables if the chairs need to go. We'll get them a little bit later. But all these tables need to go to the gymnasium. So you are duly commissioned to go and to make that happen after you finish praying as a table. The weekly update is on the table. Uh, so take a gander, pray with your table after you finish. You are dismissed. Thanks for coming to Sunday School today.